Hey guys, my name is Kenna and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So first things first, I want to wish everyone a very happy new year. I hope that you had a really good holiday season with friends and family and that you are feeling ready to start 2020 off on the right foot. I know that I am. 2019 was a pretty tough year for me, but I have a lot of good things coming up in 2020 that I'm excited to share with you. And yeah, I just started this year off on the right foot and I'm feeling really good both physically, mentally, emotionally, all that good stuff. So excited to be back on here filming videos for you guys. Um, I'm going to be starting off with a lot of kind of the frequently asked questions that I have right now. So today's video is focusing on alcohol in skincare. I'm going to go over what alcohols can be named in an ingredients list, whether they're good or bad, uh, things to watch out for, and yeah. So if you want to learn more about alcohol and skincare, then just keep watching. So I have also misplaced my mic, which is really weird because I found the mic cover, but I don't know where my mic is, so I'm sorry if the audio is a little bit crappier than usual. Um, I am going to keep hunting for my mic, but right now I have no idea where it is, which is weird because I don't have a big apartment. So um, yeah, I just need to rifle through some more bags and figure out where it is. I did travel with it a little bit, but if the audio is crappy, that is why. So please just bear with me. Okay, so alcohols are generally defined as having a hydroxyl group somewhere in the structure. A hydroxyl group is just an oxygen attached to a hydrogen, and that oxygen is generally attached to a carbon uh, chain, or it can be attached to other things as well. But that kind of defines alcohols as a whole. There is a huge difference in different types of alcohols though, whether they can be drying or irritating on the skin or whether they can be an emollient and very safe and inert on the skin. So I'm gonna go through all of that today and we are just gonna break down alcohols in skincare products. Okay, so starting off with ethyl alcohol. This is known as the bad alcohol in skincare and is kind of the culprit for, or has a reputation of being really drying and irritating on the skin. And that's the one that people say avoid this type of alcohol. Um, in a lab, like a microbiology lab setting, it is used at a concentration of 70% to disinfect and sterilize both tools and kind of the bench top, your hands, gloves, things like that. So it does kill microbes upon contact by essentially drawing all of the water out, them, out of them and they die. So alcohol is a very commonly used ingredient for sterilization in both manufacturing of products, but also in the lab setting um, on kind of a bench top scale as well. So alcohol can actually be beneficial in low concentrations when it's used in skincare formulations. Uh, the first way that it can be beneficial is it actually lightens the texture and feel of emulsions. So emulsions are things like um, anything that has water and oil. So it could be a balm, a cream, a lotion, uh, things like that. So it really lightens up the feel and gives it a lighter uh, texture and finish, so not as greasy. Another benefit to ethyl alcohol or ethanol in skincare products is it actually can be used to get active ingredients to penetrate deeper into the skin. And it does this by disrupting your Lipid, lipid barrier on the skin. Um, so on, on top of our skin, there is a lot of different oils, waxes, uh, fat soluble ingredients or compounds that essentially protect the skin and keep it from water evaporation and ultimately keeps your skin from drying out. And alcohol does disrupt this. That's why it can be really drying, but it can also be pretty beneficial to get active ingredients further into the skin by passing that lipid barrier. So this would be beneficial for water soluble actives, um, things like there's a lot of antioxidants like vitamin C and resveratrol that could benefit from having a little bit of alcohol in the formulation to actually get them to penetrate deeper into the skin. So this type of alcohol can also be beneficial by acting as a preservative. It can be used in a preservative system to prevent contamination um, of the packaging or of the formulation itself. So sometimes it is used in a low concentration for that purpose, but to actually kill microbes upon contact, it does have to be at a concentration of at least 70%. Um, so it's not going to kill things that are already there, but it can prevent um, growth and also if there was any bacteria on the container 
some manufacturers will rinse it with ethanol prior to putting in the formulation or the yeah the finished product so if you have really dry sensitive skin you're more likely to have a bad reaction or some dryness and irritation with ethanol or ethyl alcohol in a formulation or product um, if you have really kind of oily to normal skin you're less likely to react poorly to a little bit of ethyl alcohol in a formulation so that is something to consider as well and also the order of skincare products that you apply on your face can really affect whether alcohol in a formulation is going to irritate and dry out your skin for example um, personally if i do my full skincare routine so i do an oil serum a moisturizer Generally, I'll put on a silicone based primer and then if I use a foundation that has some alcohol It does not affect my skin at all because I've applied so many Emollients and oils that a little bit of alcohol is not going to disrupt my skin's lipid barrier it, If anything is going to just simply break down what I've already put on my face in the smallest amount But not in a way that really harms or dries out or irritates my skin So that is just another tip if you do have like a foundation that has some alcohol in it, try doing it after all of your other steps and it's probably not going to affect your skin in the same way that it would if you just applied it directly to your skin. Yeah, so again, if you do apply a product that has alcohol in it, I definitely recommend layering it over top of other products that have very high emollient properties, things that contain oils waxes, silicones, butters, just so that you have extra lipid protection on your skin and it's not going to cause as much dryness or irritation. So ethyl alcohol can be called a few different things in skincare products. It can be SD alcohol, it can be ethyl alcohol, it can be ethanol, it can just be alcohol, um, it can be denatured alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Um, isopropyl alcohol is actually rubbing alcohol and it has different benefits for the skin than like ethyl alcohol. Rubbing alcohol can be really good for kind of disinfecting things like earrings. I'm sure you've done this at home. Um, it actually does help with topical pain and uh, muscle pain or injury. So that's kind of a different category altogether, but sometimes isopropyl alcohol does make its way into skincare products as well. Okay, so the next category of alcohols is fatty alcohols. So this includes things like cetyryl alcohol, cetyl alcohol, and sterile alcohol. So these are naturally found in plant waxes. They can also be produced synthetically. So if you see it in a skincare product, it could be derived naturally or be produced synthetically. So fatty alcohols have very emollient properties on the skin. Um, emollient just basically means like skin softening. It is providing healthy lipids to your lipid barrier to prevent trans epidermal water loss and just really reinforce your own lipid barrier. Within a formulation, these fatty alcohols are going to thicken a formula because they are solid waxes and some of them do provide a little bit of slip to the formula so that it applies nicely and has a good kind of sensory um, feel when it's being applied. So these are the type of alcohols that are very inert. They're not going to cause any drying or irritation for any skin type. And I would say most people do not react to them at all. They are really commonly used in emulsions. So things like creams, uh, gel creams, lotions, some butters. And they're not something to worry about even if you do have dry or sensitive skin. Okay, now I'm just going to go over... A few different other alcohol categories that are not talked about as much as those main two but can definitely be found in skincare products so the next category I'm going to talk about is alcohol preservatives um, the two biggest being benzyl alcohol which is an aromatic compound that has a hydroxyl group on it so it is considered an alcohol um, it does have a bit of a scent and it's considered kind of a natural um, preservative although it's often synthetically produced but it is found in nature so it's one of those nature identical ones um, so benzyl alcohol is one and then phenoxyethanol very very common preservative extremely inert and has been found to be extremely safe um, on the skin and very widely used in the cosmetics and skincare industry so you'll notice that they both end in alcohol or ethanol but they are not going to be um, drying or irritating at the concentration that they're used as a preservative in a formulation. Okay, next we have essential oil constituents. So there are a lot of alcohols 
or terpenols found in essential oils. I do have a video all about the uh, chemical breakdown of different essential oils, so I will link that up here. But essentially, um, again, it's just an aromatic, car aromatic compound derived from plant parts, plant essences, and they make up some fraction of an essential oil. So an example would be like citronellol, that is a aromatic alcohol. And alcohols are generally very safe and gentle on the skin. However, there are some that are more irritating. So it's very, very compound specific with essential oil constituents. Okay, and finally, I'm just going to mention flavanols, which are a class of flavonoids, and they generally have antioxidant properties and can be very bioactive as far as interacting with membrane receptors and doing some cool stuff bioactively. Um, probably the more popular example would be resveratrol, which is an antioxidant. Um, it is a stilbean, actually, but it's in the flavonoid kind of class. So it does have hydroxyl groups on it. And yeah, that's just kind of another type of alcohol that can be found in skincare products. But again, flavonoids are often extremely, extremely non-irritating and most people are totally fine using extremely high concentrations of flavonoids and they generally do have some kind of antioxidant property. All right, so that is kind of my overview of alcohols and skincare. If you do have any more questions, I'll leave them down in the comments below or you can send me a DM on Instagram at Kenna Whitnell. And I am gonna be doing more videos on different types of ingredients and skincare products. So if you have any recommendations on what you want me to cover, uh, coming up soon, I do have silicones and skincare, but if there's anything else you are curious about, kind of as a general ingredient that is found in skincare, just let me know and I will cover it eventually. But again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.